Beloved Community Talks. Good evening, good, good afternoon, and good morning to everyone, depending on where you are watching. My name is Cameron Friend, and I am the Youth and Millennial Engagement Coordinator with the King Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Hello, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, like Cameron. I'm Troy Vincent, Executive Vice President of Football Operation, the husband of Tommy Vincent, the father of five beautiful children, Desiree, Troy, Hadassah, Tanner, and Tehran. And I'm looking forward tonight of having a wonderful conversation. We give a chance, Cameron and I give a chance tonight to uh, give Dr. Bernice King a rest. Um, and we are looking forward in our beloved community talk on a important, important topic, understanding pain and trauma of Black America and a conversation with Black men. So I'm looking forward to tonight's discussion. Yeah, that's right, Troy. Tonight we've asked some phenomenal Black men to join us for this critical and necessary conversation, uh, as many have shared publicly and privately. There is an exhaustion that is experienced by Black people navigating life in America. As a Black man, I can personally attest to the pain, the emotional trauma, and the mental fatigue that comes from racial injustice and the brutal killings of unarmed Black people. Like yourself, Cameron, uh, the fatigue is what I feel the most and the constant battle in dealing with uh, just the mental fatigue and the physical fatigue of this going from pain to anger to love, that constant cycle of the three, the rage, the pain, and then knowing what my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says, extending love. It's it's a it's been personally, it's been a journey, um, emotionally draining. Um, the scars continue to um, unveil themselves to me on a daily basis as I see what unfolds across our nation, and um, I'm just looking forward to hearing from some of our experts and our fathers and. Uh, to talk about how we deal with and share some of our own personal experiences in this space. Yeah. Well, you know, our guests tonight are really are going to help us to understand this topic from a personal, historical, and also a professional perspective. Uh, but really, before we jump in, we want to invite others to share, uh, you know, invite others to ask questions throughout the night. If you have anything that you would like to contribute to the conversation, any question that you would like to see answered, please don't hesitate. Uh, in order to write a comment itself. Now, uh, Troy, obviously, you know, this has been a very rough time for, for us all in 2020. Uh, unlike years previous, you know, we have had to go through a tremendous amount of trauma here in this country due to COVID-19 and also because of systemic racism. And Troy, you were actually on uh, a show on ESPN uh, a couple of weeks ago, and you were essentially asked to share your feelings as a black man, and as a black father of what your concerns were about where we are currently in America and your concerns for yourself, uh, but also the concerns for your children. And what was so powerful about that moment, Troy, is uh, as you know, uh, Dak Prescott, who is the uh, starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, he came out and said that after his brother had committed suicide earlier this year and being in the pandemic, it really took him to a really dark place. And when he brought it up publicly, uh, he received some pushback. Uh, in particular, he received some pushback from Skip Bayless, who, when he said this publicly, it caused uh, the question to be asked, did he have the chops to lead an NFL team when he could express that kind of depression, that kind of trauma publicly, as if that was a, a negative or a bad thing? So, Troy, for you, what even gave you the ability to share publicly how you felt um, but why were you so concerned uh, for your children in that instance as well? Well, I've, I've seen it. I, I've, I've lived it. I've seen the trauma. I've seen death firsthand in, in the community. I've watched what has unfolded. And as I think back through history, when we when we think about anti-Black racism in, in America and its origin, um, it's the sin of slavery. And we talk about slave revolts. 
we go to the civil rights movement, we go to emancipation proclamation, we go to, to our just our current Jim Crow laws. Like we have been dealing in this pain and drama through the history. Hmm. And now to see it unfold as a father, you're trying to raise your children the right way, you teach them. And I the 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 day when I did the interview, I was sharing and I was just full of pain because of the worry as a father of are my children in particular, my three black boys, are they gonna be okay? Just going from home to college, home to work, or just being safe in, in high school. And the things that we have to have that call the talks, being able to share with my son about how to conduct yourself in the event that you engage with law enforcement, hoping and praying that that engagement um, is not the wrong day for that uh, man or woman. And by no disrespect, love our men and women who serve our, our communities. But we got problems. We got challenges where our, our, our young black boys are, are being, uh, as I mentioned that day, hunted down. There's a hurt that comes from that and an anxiety um, that uh, I just can't, frankly, I haven't been able to overcome and, our, and, and, and clearly communicate that feeling to my peers. So that day, the emotion, and it's a scar. Every time I see it, every time I, I witness it, it brings back memories. I think about history. And it just took me to a point where that pain, that anger, that love is that constant battle. Yeah. Well, Troy, we thank you for, for even being able to talk about it that day. And I think this is a great time to introduce our first guest. Um, our first guest today is going to be Tracy Martin. And uh, unfortunately, uh, sadly, you know, Tracy came to national attention uh, when his son, uh, Trayvon Martin, uh, was murdered in 2012. And uh, but Tracy has continued to support other families through tragedies as an activist uh, while fighting for social justice as well. So uh, we want to welcome you into this conversation, Tracy. And uh, first thing I want to ask you is just kind of how are you doing um, in the middle of everything we are right now? Uh, thanks. Thank you for having me on, Cameron. Um, and, and it's good to see you as well, Troy. Uh, I'm, I'm doing as well as can be expected, um, ex especially with everything that's going on in our community today. Um, and we relive this story over and over again each day. Um, we as Black Americans have been disproportionately affected by society in general. Um, we continue to be the sacrificial lamb in order for people to get it. And I understand what Troy is saying and, and the hurt and the pain that he expressed that day. Um, and as a father, as a black man, um, if anyone watched uh, that day, they sympathize, they empathize with Troy. Um, just knowing that having a, a child and uh, the, the likelihood of your child uh, not making it home after just simply going to the store uh, is terrifying. It's, it's, it, you know, it, it's traumatic um, and there's something wrong with it. And, and we keep addressing the same issue over and over again. Um, I think back uh, 3,131 days ago, that was February uh, 26, 2012. That's when Trayvon was taken away from us. And so um, the hurt and the pain you know, it's it's like for me, it's like having a, a, a broken rib. Um, you can look good on the outside, but every time you smile, that broken rib hurts. And so um, just just knowing that, you know, lineage was taken away from me and my family. It's it's uh, traumatic. It's, it's something that we deal with um, on a on a mental level because, you know, we we look for help in these type things, but as black men, we've been taught so long that mm -hmm. the weak seek help when in actuality, we actually need help um, and because we've, we've, we've been programmed to be the, uh, the provider, the, the protector, and the, the everything for the family. Um, and so who do we lean on as, as men? Who do we go to? Uh, without being looked at as as uh, the weak or um, 
not strong enough to 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 hold a family up. Tracy, can I ask you a question? When when I when I won, when I because I visualize that event, and when I see uh, your son, that was in an event of someone presume uh, assuming that our young son, your son, was someone that he wasn't, just based off of his attire. Correct. As, as you share with other fathers, as you teach. What would you share with um, with myself and others on how we navigate um, being in that that presumptive someone assuming something that we're not? Um, how do we protect our our children from from that stereotype? Well, uh, you 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 referred to it as earlier when you said that um, we have to have that talk, and it's it's unnecessary. I mean, it's an unfortunate that we have to have that talk with our kids, with our uh, younger brothers, with our younger sisters. Uh, no other ethnic group uh, on the face of this planet has to have that talk with their child, with their, uh, like we do with our young black uh, boys and girls. But I think that we have, to, at, at some point we have to figure out how do we get, how do we get our children home safe? Mm -hmm. Why do we have, but, you know, in the same token, you ask yourself, why do we have to have a blueprint on simply getting our kids from point A to point B? And so um, we, we've done all we can do. We comply with the law. We, we comply with law when they pull us over. We still get shot and killed. Um, we get humiliated sometimes by laying on, you know, face down on the ground. We comply and we still face issues. And so uh, the, I think the real question is, to America is uh, when do we when do America uh, realize that we are we are American citizens um, and we have every right to walk, breathe, talk the same air that, that everybody else walk, breathe, you know, and, and and talk on a daily basis. And so, just getting America to see that we are uh, we are human, uh, we're sensitive people, uh, and, and you know, we, we deserve the right to be treated as first-class citizens, not second-class citizens. That founding principle that all men are created equal, that's Correct. supposed to be the foundation of our country. Um, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, um, thank you for, for sharing that, Tracy. You know, when, when this happened, uh, I was actually 21 years old um, when a Trayvon was taken from us. And so my life and my adulthood um, was was defined um, by that moment, um, as it was for for many of us. And so um, we just even thank you for you continuing the fight as you have, um, continuing in this process as you have. And because I think even your testimony and your story and allowing for us to have room to be able to openly grieve, um, but also continue uh, to fight for justice. Um, you know, it's, it's been difficult for, for all of us, but I mean, it's been unimaginable for you. But I think the question that, that comes back on us, like you said, is how do we get our children home? And and again, as as, as us um, and where we are, you know, how do we make it home as, as young men and having to navigate these streets and um, trying to find ways to live? So, uh, Tracy, you know, we really, truly do appreciate you and, and all that you've done uh, in response to all of this. Thank you, Cameron. I, I, one thing I, I, I think one thing that is getting look, overlooked in all of these situations, um, not just as a black man, but as a black family, um, we truly have to seek therapy. Um, and 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 the reason for the seeking therapy is because we hold we hold everything bottled up inside, and it becomes asinine to us as a people. Um, and so the, just just. Even if it's not professional help, uh, we need to seek some some form of help uh, when we have these traumatic um, when we go through the pain and the trauma of just being black in America. Tracy, that's so important. Growing up uh, to seek help to talk about you weren't feeling well, you didn't. That was not discussed in the household. It was. Right. You know, be quiet, shut your mouth, get on about your business. And through the years, you you build that callus. 
and that is trans transferred on to one generation to the another. And Cameron mentioned earlier about DAC and yeah. him showing that vulnerability right. of, of pain. We cannot allow someone else to minimize our pain and to the point of right. seeking um, assistance is critical for our, our, our overall well-being. So I, I want to thank you for just sharing that. And the more we talk about that, the, make, the more we make that normal, normal conversation, frankly, Correct. that that is it's actually strength in your behavioral health Correct. Um, and seeking and seeking assistance. Um, there's power there. And we should not let our children be minimized that that's weak or you're less of a person by doing that. Correct. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, yeah, Tracy, we thank you for the time um, that you gave for us tonight. And uh, we, we honor you and honor your family. Um, and so we just thank you for everything that, you, that you've done for us. Today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And uh, thanks to the beloved Community Talks. This is a great forum, man. And I'll be more than happy to be a part of it anytime. Yeah. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Troy. Great seeing you. So at this point, uh, we are going to transition into bringing uh, Dr. Cornell West to join us for some further context is, is how we arrive here as a nation. Uh, he is a lecturer, an author, an activist, professor, and Dr. West has been a champion for equity, equality, and the betterment of the human condition for years. So we welcome Dr. West to this discussion. Thank you so very much. I salute both of you, you brothers, and we all of us salute the visionary leadership of our dear sister, Dr. Bernice King, uh, who represents the, the highest level of spiritual nobility and moral royalty ever produced in the United States with Coretta Scott King and Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, uh, but I'll tell you, Brother Tracy, you know, he, uh, what an inspiration he has in terms of holding up the bloodstained banner of love and justice, of integrity and, and tenacity. Uh, uh, good God Almighty. And the same is true with our dear brother Jeff, who's such a magnificent scholar. But thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I want to thank Sister Terry Gay, too. She's been wonderful. She's been wonderful. Yeah, so, Dr. Wells. I'm go sorry, ahead. go ahead, Cameron. No, go ahead, Troy. Go ahead, Troy. I've just been interested. I've been waiting just to Dr. West, where do we go? Where do we go from here? As a community, as men of color, we've seen it. I mean, we've we've seen hundreds of years of 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 this treatment based off of your history. Where, where do we go? Where do you, where, where this new generation? What advice would you give us? Oh, it's a wonderful question. We'll begin with Sankofa, which means, of course, you have to look back to be connected to the best of your roots in order to be fortified and well equipped to deal with the ugliness in the present. I mean, I was blessed to have my, my father, Clifton Lewis West Jr., who was, I'll never be half the man he was. So I'm continually going back to him. I go back to my brother, Clifton. But we also go, we have to recognize, given our history, there's never been a, a people in the modern world who have been so chronically hated and yet dish out such love warriors. So we got to go back to Frederick Douglass. What did he have? What kind of vision and courage, integrity? What kind of fortitude did he have? Same would be true with Harriet Tubman. We got to go back to Curtis Mayfield. We got to go back to Aretha Franklin. We got to go back to Ida B. Wells Barnett. So we go back in order to get ready, you see. And, and we so that what I tell the young folk, don't you know? that you come from a people who have been, yes, traumatized, but dish out wounded healers. We've di we dish out wounded herders too. So that the question becomes, once we're wounded, well, we're gonna heal or we're gonna hurt. But we've got magnificent wounded healers. Now I was blessed to be a product of Shiloh Baptist Church, Reverend Willie P. Cook and Deacon Hinton and Sarah Ray, Sarah Ray was my vacation Bible school teacher, Sunday school teacher. And I can go back to their spirit their power to not just survive, but to thrive. That's why the spiritual and the moral must be given primacy. And by spiritual, all I mean is the ability to engage in a formation of your soul so that you, you're tied to something bigger than what is coming at you. You're in the world, but not of the world that something has gone into the shaping and molding of who you are, such that 
no matter how bad the circumstances, you're never surprised by evil or paralyzed by despair. Mm. That's why we are blues people. Because that's what the blues is fundamentally about. Nobody loves me but my mama and she might be driving too. That's the king of the blues. That's B.B. King. But what is he saying? He's saying, no matter how bad the situation is, I got style, I got smile, I got a little help from Lucille. Lucille has to do with Robert Johnson's coming through him. Ma Rainey's coming through him. Bessie Smith is coming through him. Muddy Waters coming through him. He's got a tradition he can fall back on. And you hope that you have friends, family, community, partners. And that is the way in which black men have been able to straighten their backs up. Because let us be very clear, a free black man is the most powerful threatening individual in a white supremacist society because he's free to love and black love is a crime in a white supremacist society he's free to fight for freedom and they want to convince us our freedom is a pipe dream they want to convince us our hope is a joke they want to convince us our history is a curse but once you got radical love and radical freedom in love you know you're gonna go down loving you're going to go down fighting for freedom. You're going to go down building on the best of your history. And you're going to go down holding on to hope, even as you kill the vicious illusions like white supremacy, or male supremacy, or homophobia, or transphobia, any ideology that loses sight of the humanity of people. And of course, I speak as a Christian. So I'm talking about the blood at the cross. I ain't talking about that little thin Kool-Aid that people dip in sometimes in church just in order to get titillated. I'm talking about a fundamental transformation inside of you that frees you up so that truth makes you free to love without anybody's permission, to fight for justice without anybody talking about you because you got something inside of you. Old folk used to say, if the kingdom of God is within you, then everywhere you go, you ought to leave a little heaven behind. And what's inside of you is that light that Fannie Lou Hamer sang about. That light that shines, that's what's kept black men, black women, black communities going, our strong spirituality, our strong morality. And once we lose that, then as Brother Martin used to say, it's just survival of the slickest or obsession with the 11th commandment, thou shall not get caught. Dr. Dr. West, when you, when, you, when you talk about history and legacy, one of the things I found even with my own children yeah. Is that our young people today, when we tell them to go back and look at history, they get angry. Mm. They don't want to move forward with the integration of love as they move forward towards justice. What do we what do we say to young people who say, Dad, your generation didn't handle you all's business? That's why we're in this position today. And it's not love, it is it's anger. And we know what when anger triggers where that can go. What do we what do we tell our young people about that importance of moving forward in love? That's a profound question. I mean, I've been blessed to teach in prisons for 37 years. And so many of the young brothers ask me that question. And I tell them, let's just look at the present. Who are you into? Are you into Kendrick Lamar? Oh, I love Kendrick Lamar. Where do you think Kendrick got his, his first name from? Eddie Kendrick. Who's Eddie Kendrick? Saying a sweet falsetto for the temptations out of Birmingham, Alabama, that the very persons that you love now have a history inside of them that has shaped them so that history is not some abstract thing tied to a museum. It is living and vital and vibrant in the lives of the very people that you associate yourself with. It, it could be a Cardi B. It could be an Erica Badu. You start with where our young people are. It could be, you know, it could be anybody. It could be a Kerry Washington. You could see the Cecily Tyson. You could see uh, Lowering Hansberry. You could see James Baldwin. The history is in the present, but but so, so that the challenge really is, well, when we're talking about something past, there is no present without the pastness in the present, and we can never have a future without being connected to the best of our past as we live in the present. And we should never ever forget as August Wilson used to say that when black people perform in whatever form, they are authorizing an alternative reality 
And so we, 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 we tell our young folk, do you want a different reality? Do you want to zoom the way the Commodores did and dream of someplace better? Do you want to transcend what's coming at you? Yes, I do. Oh, I see. Then you're going to need a little help from history. Not to imitate it. No, no. To build on your own creations in light of what has been bequeathed to you. And once you lose that connection to your history, you lose that connection to your mama, your daddy, your community, and others, then you end up not just isolated, but you end up getting manipulated by the culture, which is a market-driven culture of weapons of distraction. That's what it is. We are distracted from distractions by distractions, away from what really matters, away from love, away from integrity, away from courage, away from vision. And what do we end up with? Instant gratification, bodily stimulation, preoccupied with short-term gain, careerism, opportunism, want to be a, 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 a peacock so everybody can see you. You say peacock strut because they can't fly. Mm. We, we come from a people of eagles at our best. It's a very different way of looking at the world. Being Thank in the you, world. Dr. West. That's profound. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. West. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for that. That was truly a gift. Uh, we thank you for for your your courage. We thank you for your, your longevity in this fight. Um, I know myself has benefited from you for years. Uh, so I personally thank you for for your contributions to this effort. Uh, Absolutely. So you all, so. I thank you for your leadership, Dr. West. No, I salute both of you. All. We in it together now. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. West. Appreciate you. God bless you. So, wow. Um, we just hear. What do we just hear, Cameron? I mean, we, we go back to Tracy, and he's yeah. talking about you know the the talks that we have to have with our children and complying, and the, yeah. you know we're still that accountability that we're still looking for for yeah. our children, our communities, our men to be treated as 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 equals, and then we, Doctor West, takes us to we can't forget our past, but when we're talking to those, our allies or those who we're looking to support us in our efforts, sometimes they don't want to talk about the ugliness of the past. And Dr. West just acknowledged the importance of acknowledging the past so that we can move forward in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, while we're doing this as well, uh, whoever's in the audience, I mean, please feel free to ask questions um, and, and contribute comments. Uh, because again, this is this has just been gold for all of us, um, and I, I think in particular, obviously, with uh, what Tracy shared. Um, again, as a as a millennial, as a millennial black man, um, having been shaped uh, by the events of Trayvon Martin from that moment in 2012 on, um, you know, we have just really uh, had to learn how to fight. And I think in reflecting in the past, uh, as Dr. Dr. West talks about, it's important because we have to know where we have been to know where we are going, but also there are tools that we can utilize from our past that will help us and benefit us going towards into the future as well. Um, so in this I'm sorry, go quick, mm -hmm. proceed. No, go, ahead. go ahead, Troy. I'm just, I'm so, I'm curious on how we tie, which is great because our, 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 our next expert, like how we tie this together. Because again, I, I still struggle with the, the pain, the anger, the love, I grew up for decades, the stigma of not seeking assistance or help. The clinical help is a bad thing in, in, in the black community. Uh, that doesn't show your toughness, your honor, your callous of being uh, the leader of the household. And how do we tie all that together where we as men, we're vulnerable, we're comfortable with our children. It's so important that our sons and daughters see their mothers and fathers, in particular the fathers, be vulnerable. It's important that we hug and we we share. It's important that our children see the love that we can extend to our significant others. Um, the hugging and the loving on our daughters and sons, they need to see that. That's so important. But many of us have grown up that that is, there's that there's that connection, or that miss of you can't show that that piece or that vulnerability because it's a sign of weakness when actually it's a sign of strength. Yeah. 
Well, with that, you know, we're going to bring in Dr. Jeffrey Gardier. Um, he has appeared in a number of national talk shows and programs. Uh, and although he has his own private practice, uh, he has right to become known as America's psychologist. So we bring in Dr. Jeff uh, for this point of the conversation. Dr. Jeff, welcome. Thank you for having me, Cameron and Troy. And of course, my regards to uh, Dr. Bernice King. Absolutely. And how are you, before we begin, how are you doing? Well, uh, this is something I think that uh, you have really hit upon with our incredible guests uh, this evening, uh, that uh, we um, are in the struggle. Uh, one man whose son was, uh, was killed uh, needlessly, another man who is a major historian and certainly has put skin in the game, and as well, a situation of where we see that as helpers, as we are healers, and Dr. West talked about this, right? The wounded healers. Uh, many of us, that's who we are right now as men and women of color who are therapists, who are uh, in many ways assisting the community. We need to take care of ourselves. So when you ask me, how am I doing? I know I'm doing well. I know I'm doing great. I know that I feel so much that there is purpose because I am driven by the work of the Lord as an ordained minister, as a clinical psychologist. But I also know that it's important for me as a psychologist, uh, for you uh, as professionals, for you as being part of the clergy, for all of us out there to really take care of ourselves, to break that stigma that you referred to earlier, uh, where we're not seeking help uh, with regard to some of our mental health. And notice that I'm not saying mental health uh, 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 issues, but our mental health challenges. To be able to tap into that is the most important thing that we can do. I've done it as a therapist. We need to do it as family members. We need to do it as friends. During this time of COVID-19, this is the time where all of us as brown and black people need to understand the pain that we have been in for so long and how we're seeing it now uncovered by COVID-19 and the fact that we've been disproportionately affected by it. The hood has come off of what we see as uh, systemic racism for so long. The police shootings that have been highlighted, where we are with unemployment and what is happening with the divisiveness of the politics of our nation as we speak. We are in pain, but this is the time for us to get help, to get therapy, to talk to our loved ones and friends, to stay connected so that we can all help one another through this extraordinary time in our lives. Dr. Jeff, you, you, you actually said, when I asked you, how are you doing? You said you were well. How do we show up each day in our authentic selves? Typically, if we ask that to our colleagues, we ask that to our children, in particular, our young boys, how you doing? A check-in when I'm good is the term you get. When we can look in their eyes, we understand what's going on in the universe, and we know that that term, I'm good, is not good. How do we, how would you say we navigate? How do we, how do we break that without, you know, we're not clinically assessing people, but we know that term, I'm, I'm good, is not good. That's right. And Troy, you referred to this earlier when we talked about, are we really hugging? Are we in many ways being the role models that we need to be? And as role models, we have to admit that we are going through adversity. And therefore, we have to be able to admit our pain. We have to be able to teach our children that it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to actually try to do something about it. So we can talk to our kids till they're blue in the face. And as you can see in the background, I, I have so many children that I try to be a role model to. And by doing that, I am teaching them to be able to tap into their pain, to talk about their pain, and then to be able to have the catharsis, uh, catharsis rather, of being able to speak 
about how they are doing and what they need to do uh, better and to connect with one another as far as sharing empowerment strategies. But just saying it to them is not enough. We have to show them how we do it so that they can learn how to do it. So that to that point, I think that's such an excellent point, Dr. Jeff. And so really the follow-up question to that for our audience especially is, is where can people go for help if they don't have health care, if they don't have money and they are in need of therapy? What are some practical next steps for people to get the help that they need? Uh, great question, Cameron, and thank you for that. Uh, a lot of people feel that they may not have the money right now, especially uh, with, uh, you know, we see issues with insurance, uh, uh, we see issues with finances, but certainly, and, 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 I, and I'm not saying it just because I am here with Beloved Community Talks, but they can go to their houses of worship. Um, those days are over where it was just, well, go to the church and go to the mosque and pray. Now we know the churches and the mosques and the temples and all of the houses of worship um, certainly have embraced psychotherapy, have embraced sp uh, spiritual counseling with many of their counselors getting the training to look at the psychodynamics. So your house of uh, worship is one of the first places you can go to and it don't cost you nothing. The second place that you can go, of course, is online. There are many self-help groups that cost little to nothing where you can connect with peer counselors, where you can connect with life coaches, anyone who is willing to listen and has some training and who can help you with the catharsis of talking about what is going on in your life. And then finally, turning to family and friends. Uh, believe me, they do have the power to hear you and they do have the power to assist you. The important thing is reaching out of the darkness to someone who can lead you to the light. Well, you know, Dr. Jeff, I think that one of the things that is most important about what you do is you are contributing to an area of need in particular with black men that we historically have not had access to. And I even say access from a, a practical standpoint, but even emotionally, we haven't been taught how to access that part of our lives in a way that was healthy. And especially in the middle of COVID and especially of the unraveling of our nation because of systemic racism, uh, we encourage everyone listening to this, but especially with what Dr. Dr. Jeff just said, it is imperative. It is imperative that we be emotionally and mentally healthy. And so, Dr. Jeff, we just truly thank you so much for what you are doing. Uh, yes. Your job is vitally important to the success of the black community as a whole. And I know myself and I know Troy, um, you know, we, we need uh, more people like you who are doing what you're doing because you, it benefits all of us to be able to search our own mental health. Dr. And Jeff, thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, Troy, uh, this is one of the maybe more difficult conversations that, that we could have. And in light of uh, what Tracy has said, in light of what Dr. West and Dr. Gardier has said, mental health and emotional health in this country has not been something that African-American men have been taught um, to buy into. And particularly with the football community, athletic community, um, those are not just things that we are taught. Because, you know, when we were young, you know, we're taught, you know, you just need to be stronger. You just need to fight through it. You know, whatever pain you're feeling, you just don't think about it. You just keep pushing and keep pushing. But the problem is, is that we are digging ourselves an early grave because we're unwilling and unable to deal with this trauma that we are carrying that is so heavy. I mean, Troy, you're, you're a father. You're, you're, so, a, you're having to deal with all these things. Yeah, what you just said was we're actually, we are taught. We're taught to suppress those feelings. Exactly. Yeah. And in particular, I'll just use in the athletic realm, the, to, to be emotional is definitely has been, we've been taught that's a sign of weakness. Yeah. To show any type of, frankly, empathy, at least in our particular sport, is a sign of weakness. We have to be willing, uh, to doc, Dr. Jeff's point, we have to be willing as men, in particular black men, we have to be willing to open our hearts 
to here to seek assistance, not not help, but seek assistance. He talked about reaching out to our family, be vulnerable and making sure we show those signs of empathy and love um, amongst our community. But we we got work to do and we can no longer these scars, the pain, the anger. Uh, we must move forward. Uh, we, we're looking for accountability um, from the our local and state officials. But we have so much work to do in our own communities amongst ourselves, Cameron, as we've discussed tonight. And it this will come through love. Uh, this will come through love and, and conversations like this that are difficult. And I would just say this to the audience. You're not alone. You're not alone in the way you feel, especially you as men. You're, you're not alone in in your feelings and how you feel being angry, the pain, the suffering, the inequalities that we see, the racism that we see. You're not alone. But you have to reach out. You have to talk to someone. You can't hold those feelings in. If you do, ultimately, you will explode. There will come a time where that you, you'll it'll tick, 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 and then it'll be a, a massive explosion in your life. So I would just share that, Cameron. It was a deep, yeah. deep conversation. So much from um, I'm so inspired, always been inspired by by Tracy and being a father and your son being taken away from you. Um, always been inspired by him and his strength and his encourage to, to teach and I'm watching him. I read a lot of his materials and um, just a wonderful leader. And uh, Dr. West speaks for itself uh, what he's done, the scholar, the professor, and then Dr. Jeff, what he provides for our community is just fantastic. Well, look, you all, we want to thank you all for joining us tonight with the beloved Community Talks. Uh, please join us for part two, Understanding Pain and Trauma of Conversations with Black Women. Uh, if you are interested in disrupting and dismantling racism, please join us for Eradicating Racism 101 on September 28th at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time and Eradicating, eradicating Racism 102 on October 1st at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Again, I am Cameron Friend. I'm Troy Vincent. Be safe. We thank you. We'll see you soon.